So let's continue with the math section in Strivers A to Z DSA course. And before that, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is print prime factors of a given number. So what is the problem stating? You will be given a value n, and you'll have to print down all the prime factors. Now, what are prime factors? So if I write down all the divisors, basically all the numbers that divide sixty, then that will be one. Two, three, yes. Four, five, uh, six, yes. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Correct. Uh, eleven, twelve, twelve, yes. After that, fifteen. After that, twenty. After that, thirty. And after that, sixty. Now these are the numbers that are dividing in. So they are the divisors. If I'm asking you, prime factors. That means. The numbers that are prime and are dividing the number. So two is a number that is dividing the number, and it is prime. Three is a number that is dividing sixty, and it is prime. Five is also a number. Do I see any other number? Probably no. These are the numbers. Yeah, these are the numbers that are prime and are dividing this number n. So these are the prime factors. So you'll have to print two comma three comma five. For thirty-five, the prime factors will be five comma seven. For seven eighty, the prime factors will be two, three. Well, you'll find it out when we divide. Or the easiest way to do it is seven eighty. You divide it by two, and then you get three ninety. You again divide it by two. What you get is one, and after that uh, one nine nineteen one ninety-five. After that, can you divide it by three? The answer is yes. So you divide it by three, you'll get six t five. Yes. Can you divide it again by three? No. So you divide it by five, you get thirteen. Can you divide thirteen by anything apart from thirteen? No. So thirteen is what you'll divide it by. So the prime factors are two comma three comma five comma thirteen. The standard school way that we used to do. So this is what you'll have to print. If I ask you the extreme naive approach, I think we can derive the naive approach from printing down all the divisors. So if I so if I ask you the extreme naive approach to this particular solution, you'll be like, maybe I can just find out all the divisors and then check which are prime. So I already know how to check prime. I've already written this uh, piece of code in the last lecture. How do you check prime? In a time complexity of b go of square root of n, maybe I can reuse it. So what I will do is, I'll take a list which will be storing all the prime factors. I'll start iterating from two because that is the first prime that I know of. I'll go till n itself because the number can be the prime factor itself, and then I'll go like i plus plus. I'll be like, hey, if the number n is dividing. If the number i is dividing n, and at the same time if that is prime, please check if that is prime. Again, prime check has been written. In that case, can you please uh, please add this number i as your prime factor? So I'll be adding it, and the for loop will end. So if I write down this portion of code, the the time complexity will be b go of n into square root of n because n is for traversing, and square root of n is for checking out. Prime. So this will be the time complexity, and the space complexity will be for storing the prime factors. Again, we cannot predict the space complexity because we are not using it to solve the problem. We are using it to return the answers, right? And the answer is variable. Explain this to the interviewer. Can I optimize it? Probably yes. I already know one thing. Again, going back to the divisor lecture, I already know for thirty-six, if one. Is one of the divisor. The other divisor will be thirty-six. If two is one divisor, the other divisor will be eighteen. If three is a divisor, the other divisor will be twelve. Or if four is a divisor, the other divisor is nine multiplied, right? And then six and six. Can I use this thing? Can I use this thing and make sure that this loop is not running till n? Because what I need is all the divisors, and I know. I is the number. The other divisor is n by i. Why can't I do this? I can, right? 
So I'll be doing the same thing. So what I'll do is, I'll start looping from i equal to 1, rather i equal to 2 because that is my first, remember this, that is my first prime number. Got it? So if I have to write down the pseudocode, what I will be doing is, I'll be starting from i equal to 1 and I'll be going till square root of n instead of n, yes. And this time I'll say, hey, listen, if n modulo i is 0, in that scenario, first of all, please check if this number is prime. If this number is prime, that means the integer i that is dividing n is a prime factor. So can you ask the list to add this i? Perfect. And what about the other divisor? I know that the other divisor is n by i. So I'll take n by i, but I'll make sure that it is not the same number i. Why? If you remember, for 6, you might get the other divisor as 6. So it is very important to check it out. So I'll just have a check. And I'll say if that is the case, inside of this if, please have a check for is n by i a prime? If that is prime, I can say the list. Okay, this is my other divisor. So please add it. And you can just finish this off, finish this outside f and the for loop. So what will be the time complexity for this one? Now on a naked eye, it seems like the outer loop is running for square root of n. And there is a inner prime check for two times. And the prime check takes square root of n. That's on the naked eye. But I'll have to keep this in mind and you'll have to explain this to the interviewer that the time complexity is something that we cannot exactly derive. Why do I say that? Because there's an if condition. Every i from 1 to square root of n is not going through a prime check. Only the i's which are a factor are going through a prime check and this will be dependent on the given integer n. So this is an approximate. It will never be multiplied by multiplied by. Because not for all the numbers you're doing a prime check. And definitely not for two times. Because one you'll be skipping. For something like a six you might skip. So this is an approximate time complexity. But yeah, it'll be near about that. What about the space complexity? Again, we cannot predict it. Because we're using a list to store all the factors. All the prime factors. So it depends how many prime factors will be there for a number. This is the time complexity and the space complexity. Can I improve on this? Can I do better? Can I go towards logarithmic? Probably yes. And I will be following... Wait a second. Yes. I will be following our school method of doing it. Instead of going through every number and checking it, I will be doing it in a shuttle way. Let's try to do it. It's a very simple way to do it. So I'll take the first number, which is 780. Rather, the last one. Let's take 780. What am I doing? I know that the first prime, I know that the first prime is 2. So I'll divide it with 2. What if I get, what is that? 390. I will again divide it by 2. What if I get what is, uh, that's basically 195. So the division by 2 is completed. So after 2, I'll check with 3. Is it divisible by 3? It is. So I'll divide it by 3. And when I divide it by 3, what will happen is I'll get 65. I'll again try dividing it by 3. It won't. So I'll go to the next number, which is 4. Now, one thing I'm very sure, because I divided it by 2, as many times it was possible, right? It was possible till that time I divided. So, any multiple of 2 will not be able to divide it any further, correct? It will not be able to divide it for sure. So, when you try dividing 65 by 4, it will not. So, we don't need to do an external prime check, okay? I'll go to the next number 5. And I'll see that 5 is actually dividing it. Okay. I'll divide it with 5. So when I divide it with 5, I get 1, 3. 
I again try to divide it by 5. It's not possible. I'll go to the next number 6. Again the same thing. When you try dividing it by 6, it won't be possible. The 13 won't be possible. This is divisible by 6. This is divisible by 6. But you won't check with that number. We'll check with the reduced number after division. And you don't need to do a prime check because 2 and 3, when you divide it by 2 and 3, 6 is done. Got it? Next, we'll go to 7. Not possible. 8, not possible. 9, not possible. 10, not possible. 11, not possible. 12, not possible. 13 is possibly the last number because you're left out with 13 and 13 is possible. So, done and dusted. I'll follow the same methodology. I will not do a prime check. What I'll do is, I'll start off with i equal to 2 because that is the first, you know, that is the first prime factor, or prime factor, possible prime factor. I will go on till n and I'll do an i plus plus. And I'll say, hey, listen, if the number is divisible by 0, then this is a prime factor. I'm straight away saying it. You'll understand why. And then I'll say, max it out. If the number is 2, divide it by 2 as many times it was possible. It'll be like, okay, n modulo i equal to equal to 0, n equal to n by i. I kept on dividing it by 2, by 2, by 2 as many times as possible. So when you call for 4, it will never be divisible by 4. And point to notice, I'm doing it with n. I'm reducing n. So this for loop, which was supposed to run till 780, will not run. After the second iteration, when i becomes 3, it will run till 195. When i becomes 5, it will run till 65. When i becomes 13, it will run till 13. It won't run till 780. I'm doing it in a lot lesser number of iterations. And the if will be completed. And then the for loop gets completed. So eventually if you check out for 780, you can take pen and paper, do a dry run. You will see that this for loop is running for bigo of 13 times. Because I'm updating the value n, but I'm keeping a check on the n itself. So it'll be running till 13. It's only running till 13 times. Yes, there will be exceptions. So we saw that it is running for 13 times for a big number like 780. So is it optimized? No, it is not. If I give you a number like 37, if I ask you to write down the prime factors, it is having one prime factor. For 37, 37 itself is the prime factor. So if I try to run the loop from 2 to 37, that's what we were doing, right? i equal to 2 to 37. That is what we did over here. If I try to divide, no one will divide it apart from 37. So this time, it will be running for 37 times, which is we go off n. So for a large number, which is prime, the complexity still stays as we go off n. For a large number, that's prime. Very important. For a, please explain these cases to the interviewer. For a large number, that is prime itself. The complexity still stays as we go off n. Can I optimize this? I can. I can optimize this. I know one thing for sure. If 37 is the prime factor itself, what if I just loop till i equal to 2 till square root of n? If I do this, what will happen? Will it work? It will. And I write the same thing. If n modulo i is equal to equal to 0, that means it's a factor. List dot add please add i at the same time if divide it till the max possible time you can till the max possible time you can this is still going to work so if i run it till square root of n it is still going to work but what will happen is it will not give you the prime factor 37 so i know one thing for sure if the number itself is the prime factor it's Never going to come inside this for loop because I'm running the for loop till square root of n. And I'm taking i as the divisor or the factor. So what I can do is, at the end of the day, I can have a check. Hey, listen, 
if n is not equal to 1, if n is not equal to 1, please add this as your prime factor. Please add this as your prime factor. Why this works? Let me explain you with an example. Let's take 780. And let's try dividing it. First time, n. Yes, list will add it. So list will add 2. While, will divide it. 390 will again divide it. 195 and then the while will stop. Fall, my bad. Fall loop comes back and the value changes. This time 3. Yes, list will add it. And the while loop will divide it once. And the value it will get is, uh, get is 65 and it will stop. And this time the value is 4. Remember you are running till square root of n. n is 65. Square root of 65 is how much? 8 point something. So we are still running from 4 till 8 point something. We are still running. We are still running. Okay. 4 will never divide it. Okay. We will go to 5. We will 5 divided. 5 is possible. So while loop will again divide it once. And this time on division, I will get 13. And when it divides it, please make sure you add it to the list as well. 5 divides it. Now, since 5 is dividing, what happened to the number? The number went to become 13, right? And again, if I try to divide it by 5, the while loop says no. I go back, this is 6. But remember, this is square root of n. And square root, because the number is 13, is 3 point something. That's 3. So 6 till 3, the for loop terminates. The for loop terminates. And at the end of the day, I will find that this value of n is not 1. Because it still has 13. So I didn't go till 13 and did a 13 by 13 till 1. I stopped when I reached a prime number. I stopped when I reached a prime number, something like that. And eventually, I just added it to the answer. So this time, I did loop till 6 instead of 13 times. I did loop till 6, which was significantly lesser than 30. Right? Not 780 times. Just 6. And then there was certain number of divisions because of this while loop which is you can say logarithmic when you divide it you usually say it as logarithmic so the overall time complexity again cannot be pinpointed can be approximated only we go of square root of n at the worst possible case when the number is prime because it won't produce and logarithmic n for the division very very optimized and the space complexity again depending on the number of factors it will be varying got this and you might be thinking hey why did we check for n not equal to 1 why why you can simply add it because the last number i'll give you an example take 16 take 16 as the number and try take 16 as the number and try you will understand i want you to do the dry run yourself got it Again, you'll find the C++ Java Python JavaScript code in the link below. And I hope you have understood everything. So if you're still now watching, please, please do consider giving us a like. If you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's read in some of the video. It doesn't provide take care.